ACE inhibitors, short for angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors, are a class of medication commonly used to treat high blood pressure and heart failure. In this mnemonic video, we'll cover the important facts about ACE inhibitors so you'll be ready come test day. It's the final hand of the casino's April Shower Poker Tournament. My opponent just went all in and is about to be very disappointed because I have four aces. These aces can help you remember that in this video, we are talking about ACE inhibitors, ACEs for ACE inhibitors. And if you need help remembering the inhibitors bit, just take a look at this box on the table. This casino only uses cards once, so afterwards they are discarded in this box here. In other words, the aces in this box are inhibited because players can no longer get to them, right? ACE stands for angiotensin converting enzyme. Like its name suggests, the angiotensin converting enzyme normally functions to convert the hormone angiotensin from its inactive form, angiotensin 1, into its active form, angiotensin 2. This conversion is a part of a big hormonal pathway known as the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, or RAS for short. While I won't go into the nitty-gritty details of the RAS here, you just have to know that active angiotensin 2 has two major roles in the body. One, it acts to constrict blood vessels, and two, it stimulates other hormones in the RAS to increase blood volume. As an aside, the first function is really easy to remember, since you can just examine the word angiotensin itself. Angio means blood vessel, and tensin means to tense or constrict. Put this together, and it's pretty easy to see how angiotensin 2 works to constrict blood vessels, also known as vasoconstriction. Anyways, the end result of constricting blood vessels and increasing blood volume is an increase in blood pressure. Just think of the blood vessel as a garden hose. What happens if you constrict the hose and make it narrower? The water comes out with an increased pressure, right? And what happens if you turn up the water to increase the volume of water running through the hose? It can also cause the water to come out with an increased pressure. The RAS uses both of these methods. It makes the blood vessels narrower and increases the blood volume so that the blood pressure increases. Now let's talk about where ACE inhibitors come in. ACE inhibitors work by inhibiting ACE, which prevents the formation of active angiotensin II. This prevents the constriction of blood vessels and prevents the increase in blood volume. All this eventually leads to a decrease in blood pressure. Make sense? Now let's move on to learn the drug names that make up this class of medication. To make this easier to remember, we've clustered all the drug names on the left side of the scene. This is a big money poker tournament that the casino has been promoting all around the building. Take a look at the poster here and notice that it's scheduled for today's date in April. This particular April poker tournament has an April showers theme, as in money showers. Let's make it rain. The way the tournament is held in April should help you remember the prill ending of ACE inhibitors. The drug names of the ACE inhibitor class always end in prill. For example, the most commonly prescribed ACE inhibitors to know include lisinopril, captopril, and enalapril. Notice that prill ending in each? With the drug names out of the way, let's move on to learn more about when ACE inhibitors might be prescribed. To make this easier to remember, we've clustered these clinical uses around the dealer in the middle of the scene. My opponent took one look at my winning hand of aces and realized she just lost all her money. The thought is so overwhelming that she fainted right there on the spot. Luckily, the staff at the casino are prepared for emergencies like this, and the dealer pulled out a blood pressure cuff down from the hook overhead to check the woman's blood pressure. Unfortunately, it snagged on her pin on the way down and ripped, which is why it's now deflating. This blood pressure cuff can remind you of, well, blood pressure, and the way that it is deflating or losing pressure should help you remember that ACE inhibitors are used to lower blood pressure. And when might we want to lower blood pressure? When people have high blood pressure, of course. ACE inhibitors are used to treat high blood pressure. In other words, ACE inhibitors treat hypertension. We already talked about how ACE inhibitors lower blood pressure, so let's move on. Lowering blood pressure is a good thing when someone's blood pressure is too high, but it can become a bad thing if the blood pressure gets lowered too much. A potential side effect of ACE inhibitors is hypotension, another word for a blood pressure that's too low. Just remember to keep an eye on the blood pressure of patients taking ACE inhibitors, okay? 
There's a strong smell of perfume in the casino, and this broken perfume pump on the table is adding even more to the aroma. Let's take a look at the chain of events that led up to this broken perfume pump. Before I laid down my winning hand of aces, my opponent was in the middle of putting on perfume, but she suddenly fainted when I showed my hands and dropped her perfume bottle, causing the pump to break and spill perfume all over the ace cards. This heart-shaped pump is our symbol for the heart, since it has a heart shape and the heart can be thought of like a pump, since it pumps blood, right? But this heart-shaped perfume pump is now broken. You could even say the pump has failed, which is why it's our symbol for heart failure. Heart failure occurs when the heart fails to pump blood as well as it should, just like this broken pump is now unable to pump perfume. Like I said before, the dealer is prepared for emergencies like this, so notice how she is hurrying to tape the broken pump back together. The way she is fixing the broken pump can remind you that ACE inhibitors treat or fix heart failure. Make sense? Remember that the heart has both a left and a right side, each with an atrium that receives blood and a ventricle that pumps blood out. Also remember that when looking at a diagram of a heart, the left and right sides are opposite your left and right. Think of left and right as the patient's left and right. The left ventricle pumps blood out the aorta, passing through a valve called the aortic valve. Just as the left ventricle squeezes to push blood forward, the blood pressure in the aorta pushes back to keep the aortic valve shut. A healthy heart is able to overcome this pressure and open the valve with each ventricular contraction, pumping blood out to the rest of the body. Now that we've refreshed our basic heart physiology, let's talk about heart failure and ACE inhibitors. In heart failure, the heart is failing to pump enough blood out to the body. The left ventricle becomes too weak to squeeze and pump blood forward against the pressure of the blood, making it harder to open the aortic valve. Remember how we just talked about how ACE inhibitors lower blood pressure? Well, by lowering the blood pressure, there is less pressure or resistance pushing back against the aortic valve, making it easier for the heart to pump blood forward through the aortic valve and out to the body. Another word for the resistance pushing back on the aortic valve is afterload. In case you need a refresher on afterload, just think of it as the amount of pressure the ventricle has to overcome to eject blood out the aorta. By reducing afterload, ACE inhibitors help treat heart failure. With the clinical uses out of the way, the last thing to talk about are the side effects of taking ACE inhibitors. We've grouped the side effects around the casino security guard on the right side of the scene. The smell of the spilled perfume is so strong that it's causing the nearby security guard to cough. The way the security guard is coughing can help you remember that the biggest side effect of ACE inhibitors is that they can cause a cough. These security guards know all the ins and outs of the place, so he was quick to find a dryer to dry the ACE cards before they became too damaged from the spilled perfume. Which reminds me, ACE inhibitors specifically cause a dry cough, as symbolized by our dryer here. While this dry cough is relatively harmless, it can be quite irritating and is a very common reason why patients stop taking ACE inhibitors. This dry cough is pretty unique to ACE inhibitors, so it's something that appears often on tests. Just keep in mind this coughing security guard with a dryer to remember ACE inhibitors cause a dry cough. Like you would expect, the security guard ends up in a lot of fights with unruly visitors at the casino, so it's no surprise that his most recent encounter has left him with a swollen face. His swollen face should help you remember the side effect of angioedema. Angioedema is swelling that occurs when fluid leaks from blood vessels under the skin and classically occurs around the eyes, mouth, and tongue, just like the security guard's swollen face. The adverse effect of angioedema is an important one for you to know because it can become life-threatening if the swelling closes the airway. Make sure the patient understands they should seek treatment immediately if they start to notice any facial swelling. This dryer hasn't been used in a while, and when the security guard turned it on to dry the cards, a tarantula crawled out of the open end. Here at Pixar Eyes, we use a tarantula to symbolize drugs that are teratogenic, because tarantula sounds a lot like teratogenic. Get it? It's the teratogenic tarantula. ACE inhibitors are teratogenic, meaning they can cause birth defects when taken by pregnant women. For this reason, ACE inhibitors should not be taken during pregnancy, especially in the second and third trimesters. 
just use this tarantula on test day to remind you that ACE inhibitors are teratogenic. What was the security guard doing so close to the poker table? Well, it's a slow night at the casino, so he was taking his chances at his favorite banana slot machine. I'm not the only lucky one here. The security guard just hit the banana jackpot. Let's use these bananas to symbolize potassium, since bananas have a lot of potassium, right? And since the screen is full of bananas, you could even say there are increased bananas on the slot machine. The increased bananas should make it easy to remember that ACE inhibitors increase potassium levels. If ACE inhibitors cause the potassium levels to increase too much, it can lead to hyperkalemia, a state in which potassium levels are abnormally high. As the nurse, you should anticipate this rise in potassium levels by monitoring electrolytes during treatment. You should also teach your patient to avoid potassium supplements, potassium salt substitutes, and potassium sparing diuretics. We don't want them to take anything that could put them at risk of developing hyperkalemia. One more thing before we wrap up. As you can imagine, my fainting opponent feels super dizzy. I mean, just take a look at those dizzy stars circling above her head. The way that this woman is dizzy can remind you that ACE inhibitors can cause dizziness. As we previously discussed, ACE inhibitors reduce blood pressure and may cause hypotension. Related to this, these drugs cause a drop in blood pressure after sudden movements like sitting up, which is formally called orthostatic hypotension. Clinically, this just means that patients can experience dizziness, especially after sitting up or getting out of bed too quickly. Therefore, it's important to teach your patients taking ACE inhibitors to change positions slowly in order to avoid this dizziness. All right, that's all for this mnemonic. Let's recap. ACE inhibitors are a class of medication that are easily recognizable by their pril ending, including lisinopril, captopril, and enalapril. These drugs lower blood pressure, making them useful in treating both hypertension and heart failure, but they may cause the blood pressure to drop too much to cause hypotension. ACE inhibitors may cause a dry cough, an expected side effect that may cause the patient to want to switch medications. A severe adverse effect is angioedema. ACE inhibitors are teratogenic and should not be taken during pregnancy. Other side effects include hyperkalemia and dizziness, also known as orthostatic hypotension. And now we're actually done with ACE inhibitors. See you next time. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. For more resources on this topic, including fact lists and interactive review images, click the image next to the More Here arrow. I'll see you next time.